So good afternoon. My name is Leah pappas Porner. I'm with the Calfee firm. I'm joined today by my colleague, Tim Day. Tim and I are actually in the Calfee Columbus office, and we are sitting socially distanced in different rooms. And interestingly enough, the Calfee office in Columbus are a few floors be below Jobs Ohio. And in our normal time, we can see JP and his team walking uh, above our atrium in their in their beautiful office. And so JP, CEO and president of Jobs Ohio, thank you for joining Tim and I today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. And, and just a shout out to the Jobs Ohio team, particularly Phil, who helped us with the organization of the webinar. You, you have a great team and Tim and I really appreciate their effort today. And to our clients and friends, thanks for joining and listening in. Tim and I will be watching for uh, your questions coming in. And if it's okay with you, JP, I'd like to leap into the first question and give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about Jobs Ohio. You're the third CEO and president and just give us a flavor for you know, the work that you're doing and, and how, you know, how it jobs Ohio and what you're leading. Just kind of some intro remarks, please. Great. Well, uh, first, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you and Tim and your group today. Uh, I will, I know we have 30 minutes. So uh, the, the first question is, you know, what about Jobs Ohio? Uh, I've been here since March of 2019. And I can tell you, uh, I'd been involved in, with economic development in a prior life uh, 15 years ago with the Dayton Development Coalition, but the Jobs Ohio is, is unique in economic development organization. So I do think it's worth going through a little bit of the background about what this organization is, because unless you're in the middle of it and be part of the ecosystem, you might not really know what, what it's all about. So it was essentially in 2011, the Kasich administration in partnership with the Ohio legislature spun out and privatized the Ohio Department of Development. It's not that simple, but that's essentially what happened. Uh, then in, in making it private. Then in 2013, Jobs Ohio, the now private economic development uh, organization for the state, acquired the liquor enterprise, the uh, Ohio's monopoly on the, the spirited liquors. So Jobs Ohio purchased the rights for 25 years to the liquor enterprise, we op Jobs Ohio operates the liquor enterprise and the profits from the liquor enterprise each year uh, essentially fund Jobs Ohio's operations and the deal dollars. So there is no government or tax money that goes in uh, to Jobs Ohio. It's privatized and it has a private source of funding. <clears throat> the vision for the organization is that Ohio is recognized for what many of us already know and believe passionately is that it's the best place to live, work, invest, and live your version of your American dream. A place where people can find balance and don't have to make the false choice between a professional, successful, and lucrative business opportunity and business career and success in a family or community uh, pursuits. Our mission is economic development and Jobs Ohio has been focused on 10 economic development sectors. They're listed here, I won't read through them, uh, but we don't do all things for all people. We're focused on these sectors and we build a team and resources and tools to help those retain them, to grow them, to expand them, and to attract businesses into that ecosystem. <clears throat> we have about 100 professional associates in Columbus. Uh, thing that makes those team members unique uh, to other economic development uh, organizations is many of our people have significant private sector experience in those 10 economic development sectors. We operate in partnership with six regional partners around the state. So we have a go-to-market that includes uh, regional partners and we, we maintain a presence in 10 international markets what used to be Ohio's uh, state outposts, uh, we now, uh, Jobs Ohio now maintains those through consulting relationships. So we maintain warm relationships in the 10 international markets that are most important to Ohio's economy. <clears throat> the three things that make Jobs Ohio as an organization unique uh, compared to other uh, economic development organizations in other states are number one, it's private again, 
Uh, obvious reasons that it's the, that can be a very big advantage is that we can negotiate uh, with other companies that we're trying to ex help expand and to help attract. And we are not compelled to share their private competitive information with their competitors, uh, nor with the financial markets before that company is prepared to do so. So we can communicate in private. It also allows us to be agile and to pivot and to move quickly, quicker than a government would normally be able to move. Second, we have a stable funding source. Again, uh, funding fluctuates uh, with government entities over time and based on political considerations or in terms of financial crisis. Uh, Jobs Ohio has got stable funding and resources that come from an alternative source, the liquor enterprise that allows us to bring in, again, a professional team with industry experience and provide them not just with a one or two year opportunity, but a career path uh, that, that becomes a strength for Ohio and for Jobs Ohio. Uh, it also allows us to have funds uh, to put in place for deals uh, that, that, that we don't necessarily have to wait for a legislative process to play out, to put dollars and resources together to win a big economic development deals. Again, an advantage. Third, again, we mentioned our six regional partners. Uh, what's really powerful about this, in my view, and again, unique, is that many of us have worked with statewide organizations before. Central organizations typically have significant resources and dollars, uh, but when it comes to doing a deal in a local community uh, with a granularity, a lot of times a state level organization doesn't have those, the depth of those relationships at the local level. Well, our go to market allows Jobs Ohio and the state of Ohio to bring statewide leverage and resources, but deliver them with a soft touch and a granular approach through these regional partners. Ends up being a very powerful model. Very good. So one thing I think, JP, um, that I, I wanted to mention today, I think your personal story complements your vision or Jobs Ohio's vision um, very well. I mean, I think when you look at your, your background, son of immigrants, um, you've had uh, you've military experience, you have moved away from Ohio, you've come back to Ohio. Um, and I think, you know, that story is really unique. And I think you can really approach your job in a unique way, but let's talk a little bit more about what makes Ohio competitive. And when you're looking at our neighboring states, Kentucky, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Michigan, um, West Virginia, what really stands out to you on what really, you know, businesses should be thinking about on why Ohio is really the place to be? Well, the, the answer, you're right. The, I have a, you know, an experience unique to me, and it is unique. Uh, you know, there, we, you know, Ohio, at least the part of Ohio where I live, uh, it's, you know, a German Irish Catholic. Uh, so, walking into it, the guy named J.P. Nassif is it's a little bit different to start with. Uh, right. uh, 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 we came here with an Air Force family. A lot of people in this part of the state uh, come in through Wright Patterson Air Force Base, and there actually was a term. Um, called the dread factor when people uh, that were living in DC or another base in the country would get a letter saying that you were being assigned to write Patterson there would be dread but then once you got here you found how wonderful the community was uh, how accepting and welcoming it was how affordable it was um, what stimulating work you could get here and then uh, when you got your orders to leave there was a dread factor again when you didn't want to leave and right. so, um, I, when I went into the Air Force myself, I went away to Southern California, worked in the technology and the space business, uh, and I got the letter to come back, and I came back and ended up staying here and uh, raising my family here. My wife is not from here uh, either. She's from the East Coast. Uh, so uh, the value proposition is multi-layered. Uh, obviously, affordability is a, a big deal when you're comparing it to the coasts. Uh, we, we are... Uh, if you look at the data, our cost of living index here in Ohio is at a 94.9. Uh, if you compare uh, the average of other states in our region, uh, they're at 100. And the UF, US, they're just over 100. The U.S. average is 100. So we're Ohio as a state compared to the region and nationally is more affordable. If you compare it again to the larger markets like, uh, say, Northern California or the Northeast Corridor, uh, our cost of living is up uh, anywhere, depending on how you count, calculate it, between 45 and 75 percent lower. So, a cost affordability, uh, but again, when you when you match it up against the access to talent and access to 
infrastructure and customers, Ohio, again, given our configuration in the Midwest and in the Eastern part of the Midwest, we right. are, we are literally an hour drive, an hour flight or a, a one day drive from 60 plus percent of the North American marketplace. So, uh, and we have 200,000 graduates uh, per year coming out of our higher ed institutions. So there's an availability of talent, there's a diversity of industry, and there's a diversity of communities. So depending on what you're looking for, you have access to a market, you have access to talent and multiple industries. Uh, if you like living in the country, you can live in the country, yet you can still commute into a city. So it's really the diversity uh, and the location and affordability combination that provides an outstanding alternative uh, for Ohio. And, and coming off of this COVID crisis and some of the other tragic events that have occurred in the last couple of weeks, you can yeah. see that, that value proposition getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Right. No, I think that's exactly right. And I, I can speak uh, from experience. I just moved back to the great state myself um, and, and really, really happy to, to be back home. Um, so I see the next slide up here on COVID, and that's my next question, actually, because 2019 was a banner year for you. A lot of recognition economically, um, very successful for the state, for Jobs Ohio specifically, um, third best business climate in the country, and, and several other kind of uh, awards that you received. Um, then the new year, early into 2020, and we have a pandemic at Ohio. So I'm really interested in kind of uh, how, what, how that kind of unfolded for you and kind of what, uh, what, how did you pivot out of that and what is your goal and what are your priorities now coming out of that hopefully and, and how are we, what's the path forward for you? So, so uh, thank you, that's, that's a great question. And, and obviously we could probably ask anyone on this call and you, you know, this, this was something unprecedented for everyone. And all of us were facing something that, that none of us had really faced before. And so, uh, you know, general comments about this. I, I feel like the, the team, the, and I got to give the credit to the Jobs Ohio team and our partners, uh, obviously taking the lead from the governor's leadership on this, which was just amazing, is, the, you know, in an unprecedented environment, you a lot of times can see what people are made of and what organizations are made of. And I, I think what happened with us is, and me personally, I think the last time something happened similar to this in my life was 9-11. And at the time I was, uh, you know, a junior member of a, a small startup company. So I wasn't really responsible for anything other than myself. And my, I had a small, one small child at the time. Um, but you know, we had a million people, over a million people hit the, uh, apply for unemployment at the fastest, at the fastest rate in history. Uh, small businesses, working poor minorities hit the hardest and will be the most challenging in the recovery. Uh, this has all been compounded by what we've seen occur uh, with race relations in different communities and across our country. Uh, but you know, we all saw this. I saw it directly that Ohioans came together, you know, had a common purpose. Uh, it goes to the practical nature part of our culture in Ohioans. We, we still work with our hands. We still build things. We're, we're, we're diverse in our community makeup. So people that come from a rural background and, and uh, people that come from an urban background, uh, you know, we work with each other already. We're not right. isolated away from each other. So what you saw was our state come together. And I, I think that was really epitomized at how we saw the governor uh, and the DeWine administration respond in a courageous way, but in a very practical and empathetic way. So our team did the same. We took, you know, what we could do to be part of this team in response. The mission orientation of our team came straight to the front. How can we help Ohio in a crisis? And then we put to use our our private structure, our resources, and our statewide network all came into place. When March 17th, that we had a board meeting that was supposed to be in Dayton around the NCAA tournaments. I'll talk about that later. <laughs> uh, but our board, we asked for our board and they gave us authority to allocate up to $250 million to create economic development programs to help soften the impact. So do things that we hadn't done before. So we got our team together. We developed 10 new economic development programs. We deployed the capital to those that were in need, those businesses that were in need. And by our numbers right now, we, we impact 300,000 jobs, over 300,000 jobs and over 15,000 small and medium sized businesses. 
Our board also allocated up to $250 million, so it's a total of $500 million, but up to $250 million to partner with the state of Ohio to help acquire PPE. Again, there was a global chase for scarce resources, uh, and then Jobs Ohio was there uh, so that we could move quickly. And in many cases, the state would define a requirement, and our sector teams would identify a source, would negotiate with that source, would determine logistics and delivery, and we, we supported the acquisition of 40 million uh, units of PPE. And of the 250 million, we've expended uh, about 70 million of those dollars. Uh, that's amazing, oh, JP. I mean, that's got to be unique to other states. It is unique to other states. And, I, you know, it was a seven-day-a-week effort. And I, I get in, it was right. We were right there next to our government partners. Uh, I got to give, uh, you know, tip the hat to our government partners and our team. They really... This was an environment and a situation that they hadn't faced. There wasn't an infrastructure or an apparatus to define needs, much less how we were going to distribute, procure, uh, uh, transparently track and account for. And this was something that was all stood up within a week. Wow. It's and amazing. Ohio, it was amazing. Awesome. It was something else. Yes. Well done. Well, I think, you know, it's, it's been unique and, and uh, I think something that, uh, it's been a great feedback. I've heard a lot of good uh, stories, and I think what you're able to do with the uh, PPE and other things um, and the loan programs, et cetera, are really, really good. So thank you for that. You know, one of the things I'll be focusing on here at Calfi um, will be the issues of technology and, and innovation. And I want to switch a little bit um, to a, a topic that will kind of fall into that uh, category because, you know, one of the the things I've heard um, for a couple of years now is the term Silicon Prairie and um, how are we going to be looking, you know, to attract businesses from the coast to the heartland. And I think to all of what you said before, there are a lot of advantages for business to look at Ohio and what we are able to offer them. One, you know, one question, what do you think of that term Silicon Prairie and what is the um, status of Ohio attracting tech startups here and growing that business here in the Buckeye State? So again, this is one of those areas, again, uh, like you, I had uh, moved away. I was involved in tech. Uh, uh, primarily, it boils down to both the brand and talent and the state's uh, position and brand as uh, a place to attract capital, uh, all stages of capital formation, and to be able to retrain, uh, retain and attract the talent, the knowledge, uh, essentially the knowledge economy. So I, I think like many things that with all the pain that we've incurred in recent months, this has now provided an opportunity for the state of Ohio to do more uh, and to recruit more. So some, some advantages that you're aware of, uh, you know, we, we have struggled, as you know, Tim, as a state with early stage capital. You've heard it many times. Uh, we've struggled with a uh, ability to attract talent. So a cu couple different ways that we are focused on doing both of those things now is we're, we're working uh, on the talent production side to build innovation districts, essentially that, that are located and situated in a large metropolitan area, urban setting, uh, that partner with anchors such as large universities to provide financial incentives for those universities to increase their production of uh, computer science graduates. We announced one in Cincinnati as an example. Cincinnati will be close to tripling their annual production of computer science graduates. Uh, and in that same innovation district development, we will also be incentivizing uh, a relationship between Cincinnati Children's, where they will be increasing their research and development budgets and their innovation outcomes, the research outcomes. So production of computer science graduates, increase in research and development in health technology, uh, all centered around the uh, development of mixed-use real estate, uh, apartments, restaurants, uh, small startup businesses for which, again, Jobs Ohio will be developing innovation funds where we will be partnering with venture capital uh, that's already in place and new venture capital to match investment dollars in startup companies. So it creates an innovation district, will create that center of gravity where you'll have multiple graduates and students in computer science or other STEM disciplines 
with researchers increasing their budgets and their research outcomes, uh, combined with startup companies and anchor companies, all in one center of gravity. Um, so we, we hope to invest in those innovation districts, uh, starting with Cincinnati, which we announced in February, March. Uh, then in, we're working with Northeast Ohio, Central Ohio Partners, and uh, Toledo and Dayton region on, again. So that, that is a statewide um, effort and something that is kind of beyond just the, the cities, but looking at rural areas as well as part of so, the, the districts. That, that's right. We're looking, again, we want to achieve the same type of outcomes, increasing the production of the STEM degrees combined right. with startup development, startup companies, uh, and in an area where we can build a mixed use development and create essentially a center of gra gra gravity and a clustering and a sense of place. Uh, so the, the ones in the Dayton region and the Toledo region will be, uh, you know, on as a term of art definition won't fit the exact definition of innovation district, but they will have elements and components of site development, production of, uh, of STEM talent and research outcomes and just on a smaller scale. Right. You know, I think part of that, obviously, you know, Ohio has a rich manufacturing background and I think a lot of, of ways that technology is impacting the manufacturing sector and looking at robotics and artificial intelligence and just the use of data generally. Um, what are some of the things that, that you're looking at at Jobs Ohio to begin? I think you've mentioned STEM and other things, but reskilling the workforce and getting people prepared for the jobs of the future. So, so the DeWine Husted administration has really taken an outstanding leadership role in focusing on tech cred programs and reskilling and upskilling. And Jobs Ohio, through our talent initiative, is partnering uh, very closely with them. But with, look, the way we the way we came into COVID, um, focused on talent and training and reskilling, is a bit different now. That that you know we were looking at a full employment situation, and today we're looking at million, you know over a million displaced workers. So what we'll be doing is working again in partnership with the state to identify those individuals that have been displaced, uh, making an aptitude assessment, getting them training and upskilling so that we can then quickly match them with an open in-demand job that had uh, previously gone unfilled. So we're going to be focused on, you know, the priority is going to be on those displaced workers, quickly getting them the skills and training they need so they can fill an open in-demand position that had previously gone unfilled. So Excellent. we're going to focus they're very aggressive on that, but we're still going to be focused on producing more at the undergraduate level in the production of talent. But now we have a new, you know, higher near-term priority, which is getting displaced Ohioans back in back into work as quickly as we can. Right. Even more so now, given the COVID situation. Yep. Absolutely. Leah? Yep. JP, we have offices in Ohio, in Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, we have a, a DC office as well. And so we have clients that are listening to you from different parts of the state. So talk a little bit about how Jobs Ohio leads economic development strategies that align your strategies and priorities across the state. Give, give the audience a little bit of flavor about how your organization is leading kind of that economic development strategy. So, so we, you know, we play a role, a leadership role. We work through our Jobs Ohio network partners on that. Our primary linkage, you know, we first want to be aligned and complementary with uh, the direction uh, the administration is heading. And then we work directly with our regional partners, uh, one Columbus in central Ohio, Ready Cincinnati in the Cincinnati region, the Dayton Development Coalition in the Dayton region, Team Neo in Northeast Ohio and Ohio Southeast in Southeast Ohio. And we essentially lay out, uh, you know, and we work with those Jobs Ohio network partners. Uh, and our primary focus with them is on business retention and expansion. And essentially for us, that's lead generation, where we have a very aggressive program that works with our regional partners to make sure we're engaged and have relationships and understand what the needs are of Ohio's businesses first. 80% of our projects and the jobs that come from those projects for Jobs Ohio comes from those visits, 80%. Wow. You know, most of the headlines might be, hey, a big company from Europe or China or California you know, does a ribbon cutting. But the truth is over 80% come from those business retention expansion visits. And so 
we first develop our strategy alignment with the administration, but we want to listen to the needs of our Ohio businesses first. We refine and develop the strategies from Jobs Ohio and the tools, and those are optimized by each of the region based on their strengths and their opportunities. So it's, it's pretty aggressive. We meet with our Jobs Ohio network partners now virtually at least twice a week. Uh, to make sure we're on track for business retention and expansion, that we're, again, uh, identifying workforce needs and communicating constantly between what we're doing at Jobs Ohio and the state all the way to individual businesses. And I, I think during the COVID period of the two and a half months of the COVID period, we literally touched and communicated with nearly 2,000 individual businesses uh, and hundreds and hundreds of local economic development partners all through this regional network. This is the power of that network that, that makes it happen. One of the questions that Ohio has talked about and struggled with is broadband and access uh, to uh, broadband, internet, particularly in rural and Southern Ohio. And that conversation has heightened due to the pandemic. Um, I, I know that the Ohio House has, has really focused on House Bill 13. The administration is working on Broadband Ohio. Talk a little bit about Jobs Ohio's role in uh, increasing uh, technology, access to technology, uh, connectivity for all of Ohio. So, so I think what we've seen is you know, broadband and broadband availability has been, uh, you know, part of the priority of the, the DeWine administration, and we've been working with them for the past year and change. But that, that went from being an important priority to being a critical priority based on our, all of our experiences uh, with COVID. We all worked uh, here. I have four kids that were doing distance learning from the house. Right. And so it's, a, it's essential. So We've been working, we'll take the lead from the administration, but we've been working on various plans um, because from our, from Jobs Ohio's point of view, this is part of what we established last year as our, for, as our diversity and inclusive economic development strategy, that the cornerstone of an inclusive economic development recovery for it to be sustainable is that is it includes all Ohioans, including, you know, uh, the typically underserved population. So if we make broadband available widely, uh, that opens up the opportunity uh, for Ohio's economy to tap into 500,000 Ohioans that it has not been able to tap into. It, it could add from our research uh, up to $3 billion in gross state product and 25,000 new jobs and it allows Ohio to innovate in telemedicine, telework and distance learning, all while, all while creating a, an inclusivity of outcome of uh, inclusivity of opportunity uh, for both geographies and, and populations. So it's a cornerstone. We're working with the, the DeWine administration and, and we'll be seeing, I think, something significant come out over the next weeks and months. Well, good, we look forward to that. JP, one of the questions from a company watching today is around um, approximately 23% of our employees are veterans and have proven to be great employees. Does Jobs Ohio have any resources for businesses to identify veterans in need of employment? Well, we uh, obviously that's uh, something that's near and dear to my heart. I'm a veteran. My 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 father is a veteran. Uh, we because of the Ohio's history and legacy, we we have a special relationship with the military and with veterans. So we we have added this to our uh, the Jobs Ohio's strategic uh, sectors. Uh, military and federal and, and includes veterans and we've added it to our workforce strategies and our talent strategies. So a couple, couple things that we're doing, you know, we've got the, again, a hometown heroes program uh, that uh, started, uh, we started in 2004 in, in, with minor league baseball in the Dayton area. And we've essentially uh, brought it to the NCAA basketball tournament. They have scaled it nationwide because it starts with awareness of the military member, the family, and the veteran. Uh, you've seen the governor pass legislation for military families and members. And I think what you'll see from us in the coming weeks and months is building our talent and economic development initiatives uh, that provide opportunity and tools 
uh, that give veterans access to the workforce, to training, to education, and to uh, form formation of entrepreneurial businesses. That they, they are a reliable, a dependable and hardworking part of our population. And frankly, they've earned and deserve our support. And we're going to make sure Ohio is known as one of the best states in the country for military missions, military members, military families, and veterans. Excellent. Fabulous. So we're getting close to our end. And so I see from our participants that are viewing you today, Many are with companies that are out of state or have facilities that are out of state and they make the tough decisions on where do they put their precious capital and talent and how do they invest it. So talk to us about how Ohio, in your opinion, is the best place for companies to grow and thrive. Well, you know, you, you've seen what's happened, especially uh, wherever you live over the last few months, how your state has responded, how the people in your state, the leadership in your state has responded. I think, I think what, what we've seen and what we're seeing uh, across the clients and the, the pipeline that we're working with is that uh, people are really yearning, the workforce is really yearning uh, to have a location where they can live and raise a family and not have to make a false choice between pursuing the work goals that they have and the professional goals with the family and community goals. And these things should, could and should and must coexist uh, for us all that live our own version of the American dream. And Ohio is a unique place where, again, it's a diver got a diversity of communities, a diversity of industries. It's got close access to 60% of your customers and your suppliers and your markets. And it's got economic development resources to help you get the talent you're going to need and to help you establish your base of operations here in Ohio. So I would say now is a perfect time uh, to make a establishment and make an investment here in the state of Ohio. We're glad to help you. You can call anytime and we're, we're happy to sit down with you and get you here to Ohio. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you. JP, thank you to you and your team for your time today. Thank you to Maggie and everyone at Calfee that helped Tim and I uh, put this webinar together. We hope that you can join us again at a later date, maybe live and in person somewhere, uh, but if not by uh, this wonderful technology. So thank you to you and your team and uh, to Tim and I, I wanna just personally thank you for your support of our efforts. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, I appreciate it and uh, looking forward to the next one in person, hopefully. Yes. Very good. To, to everyone watching, thanks for participating. And we hope everyone is doing well and healthy and um, look forward to re-engaging with you face-to-face -face in Columbus, Cleveland, Cincinnati, or D.C. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.